Welcome. Check out what I got. This is an awesome Klein. Why is it so awesome? The paint job alone is spectacular, but on top of that, the little tech pieces on it, I'm super happy to refurbish this one and provide it for somebody that's just getting in the road riding. Let's strip this thing down and get it all fixed up. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. Taking scary how to use bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycle. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. As before, we're talking about this Klein. You can't tell that I'm not, not excited at all, can you? Um, these things are awesome. I have one. This is one of those fast Ferrari-like road bikes, but a lot of tech put into them and a lot of amazing little details. It, it was just an amazing kind of situation. Not to knock the guys that are racers that build bikes, that's, that's fine and cool and dandy. But this guy, Gary Klein, he actually was an engineer and per, actually developed this granular 2 process, process through his MIT grant of some sort, if I read it correctly, and made some really cool bikes. Back in the day, in Parker Bikes, uh, we were a Klein dealer. Um, we were a Klein dealer when they were purchased by Trek because we were originally a Trek dealer. So we didn't really, you know, we're not on the bandwagon of Klein. And unfortunately, we were such a small shop, we didn't have a huge uh, niche type clientele. It was more mom, pop, families, that kind of thing. So opportunity for Klein to land into our, our work and our space, the scope of work was pretty pretty eye-opening and amazing. Not just the road light bikes alone. That was in the 90s where mountain bikes were going through the roof and hey I also have a mountain bike client as well as a byproduct of my searching and all that which I will never sell I always will keep it hidden away and not tell any of my you know family members about it but anyway um back to what I'm doing here is going to be stripping this down to the frame um detailing a frame which I'm super excited about because the paint jobs on clients were just legendary still are today and this particular bike is a combination with high-end aluminum with a carbon to take out that um, vibration to make a little bit of a smoother ride like i said before they actually ride like ferraris i mean they're fast and sometimes we get a fast bike it's not forgiving so that being said adding some carbon to it, it definitely softens it up actually it can make it even more softer i have one of these which actually ride really good it's smooth it's fast uh, but i like i have a couple other bikes so you know it's like flavors anyway it all depends if i'm in the client mood or i'm in the trek carbon mood or you know my Le Mans mood you know whatever when i go for a ride but anyway um these guys were, these were pretty cool, really hard to find. There are not that many left on the market. And ones you do find are like, whew, sometimes a lot of money. There's also groups out there that follow these guys. If you do get a chance to get one of these, um, it's like one of those things. If you're an avid rider, you like road riding, don't get stuck on one brand. Try some different flavors out. And, you know, doing this is really giving me an opportunity to do those kinds of things, which is a lot of fun. Um, because I've been able to ride other bikes that I would typically would not have because I was pigeonholed of the brands that we carried to the shop I was working at. Mouthful. But end of the day, this has been an excellent experience. And hey, you know, I know I have a, several people that follow me that are just on the same kind of boat. Let's, let's get, let's try this for a while. This should be fun. And, you know, if you don't like it, you always turn around and sell it. But, you know, the thing is, is, you know, this particular you know, bike, um, it, it's, it's pretty legendary and a lot of manufacturers are still using a lot of technologies that have been put into this bike even today or they don't make do them anymore. So it's kind of like a lost art in a sense. Um, too bad Gary Klein doesn't make any friends anymore. He's retired and enjoying his life, which is great for him. Um, but, you know, guys like me out there, we're just, you know, warm, we're warm, get all warm and fuzzy when we get our hands on something like this. So. These are pretty cool. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I'm gonna tear this thing apart. Uh, my process of, I uh, did the top 20 checklist on this. It seems to be pretty good. I'm just gonna start taking all the parts apart. Parts apart apart. Um, can't think of my phone myself. 
So this has a different kind of dropout. It doesn't drop out directly. It's what you call it a rear entry dropout, which is designed to go this direction. The crazy bit on that is it forces the energy into the frame, which I was surprised not a lot of companies follow that, but there is some newer tech, especially with the through axle, it's kind of eliminated that kind of need. Uh, but anywho, and these came with the Bontrager race wheels, which I'm gonna have to double check on the wheel part series of this video series. Um, reason being is some these particular ones had a um, issue on the not on the drive side over tension in the manufacturer. I'm assuming that's probably what happened. It developed cracks in the rim, or they made the rim too thin to lighten it up, and then you have problems down the road. We had um, issues of these pretty much really close out of the gate. So I remember being a service manager, uh, warranting several of these guys. So we're gonna take the set off. By doing so, we can see it. I use a chain whip. I hold the cassette in place, and I use a lock ring remover removal tool. I'm gonna have to use the force leverage Ugh. to unscrew that out. Boom, set. Kind of give a quick glance. This does have a wheel magnet on it from a computer. That's uh, definitely outdated. Uh, these things just unscrew and screw back on. I like to save these. If you notice on my tool wall, on some of my videos, I've used these. Instead of using that big old nasty ugly looking magnet strip, I actually threaded these through the back end of these um, metal um, uh, pegboard, which is not pegboard, it's metal. Um, but you know, these guys, you know, some of them are really strong and they will hold a tool pretty good. Um, kind of thing, so I have a whole collection of them. Kind of a little a resourceful reuse type tip there. Onto the front wheel. <sighs> Quick release, safety dropouts, slide it out. I do sonic clean the skewers just to get the gunk out. That kind of thing. And then I do replace all the cables, but on these guys, I gotta be very careful, the internal cable routing. So I will need to use a sleeve to replace that cable. So I'm not gonna pull these out. I'm gonna come so I can get the parts off, but I'm not gonna pull them through the frame because Klein and some other manufacturers that made internal routing, um, if you pull the thing out, you are basically up a creek and you're going to be spending the next three to four hours fishing a line through there using one of those Maddox that I just pulled off magnets to kind of try to guide it through. I was on one, I'm not going to say what brand it was, special, um, and the, the plate did not re remove underneath the bottom bracket area, which is this here, where the cable is going into. Maddening trying to get that cable to go through there. I mean, I still remember the sweat and it wasn't my bike. It was a repair I was working on and it was like, oh my, oh my, I gotta be able to fix this. Oh my, you know, so I eventually got through it, but that reminds me like any of these, I have a actual sleeve that's a housing or kind of like an internal sleeve. Um, I go through and I tape it off so I can pull the cables through and push the through the new ones in without taking all these grommets. When these were new, this back grommet where the um, brake is, which is this guy right here, was out. Yeah, it's in there. And when this was out from, from building, you can easily get the cable through there, then you put that in there. But these pressed fit in. So to get this back out, to get a cable through there, it's very tricky. Had to do it a couple times, um, horrible experience. So make sure that sleeve is in there. And is this one, yeah, this one does have sleeves on, on it already um, that actually go to this part here, 
But I gotta be very careful if that sleeve is still intact because if that sleeve is popped through the eyelet hole here into the frame, I'm not gonna be able to get that uh, cable through there very easily. So I gotta inspect it when I lightly pull it out partially um, to put a new one in and make sure that's still in there and intact. Because if that pops out and I have to pull this whole thing out, then all of a sudden I'm trying to do a lot of fishing and this doesn't seem like the case anyway. So you can see that you gotta be careful. So, uh, I'm just taking parts out. So this one I feel comfortable pulling off, so that's good. Uh, I'm gonna do the brakes. So I can pull the house and leave the cable in. So I'll save that for measurement. And I do apologize now because this videos on this particular series on this bike are gonna be a little bit longer because there's just so much to go over. Um, coolness to go over. So, you know, I'm gonna geek out and if you wanna hang out, and watch and pick up some gold nuggets from this particular bike. Give me it. Um, yeah, I'll be, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, so Klein was a company, um, when he started building bikes in the 80s and 90s, it was in Chehalis, Washington. Um, and he was really close to uh, Boeing. Boeing is out of Washington, out of Seattle, and Chehalis is pretty in close proximity to it. And he used a lot of the, I think, believe it was Boeing aircraft, aluminum materials, um, with combination with the, um, what would you call it? Granulate two process. Um, so when the track rep became the client track rep, it was one of those situations where they had to be schooled on how he made their frames when they bought them. And uh, I mean, they sometimes explained it all right. <laughs> um, you know, reading on it lately is a little bit different than what I remember. A memory of, oh, well, you know, it's like, oh, you put it in a hot bath oil system and drew the, the tubes out where they change the shapes. Um, the biggest one was square tapering and the, by the uh, bottom bracket chain stays and going to a cylinder here to give it more stiffness, um, which that does you know seem logically sound, but how the process was done didn't seem so sound. So I'm um, yet today really without doing a lot of research. Uh, no, exactly how they make the tubing. I mean, I know the material itself is a blended alloy, and that's where he got the granulate portion down, I believe, with more reading on it. But basically, long story short, it's fancy, a little bit of a fancy process of tub you know, tubing it out. Um, um, the road bikes didn't have a lot of the mountain bikes. They had this thing, I think it was called a keg rater. It looked like a keg. Um, would have drew out the tubing of the head tube and um, made it thinner, lighter, stiffer, I guess. Oh, nice. And uh, one of those deals where you wonder if some of it is marketing and was I <laughs> influenced by that marketing? And, um, or was it really some truth to it? And granted, you know, there's some truth to all marketing, but you know, whatever. Gotta figure it out, take it with a grain of salt. I believe uh, Specialized has stole some of these kind of usages on their diverge on the welding, welding techniques. They had some other fancy guy that did it. Um, or something similar. It seems similar to me when I looked at them. I was working on a specialized dealer, that kind of thing. Uh, so I'm gonna hold off on taking, well, I can take those off. Just leave the cable still in there and be replacing those. So I wanna make sure that's dandy. Take the pedals off. Oh, sorry, slotted 15 millimeter. I thought they were an hour. <clears throat> I 
and taking pedals off is all about leverage. Sometimes these boogers get on there at the point I have to use the uh, <laughs> big old three foot cheater bar. Get those off. This one even has the track bottle cages, the vintage era, so these have probably been on there since they were spike was new. Bought this bike from a guy from a guy, so it's not an original owner, but he said he bought it from a buddy that was in a bike shop. So I like to use a little strainer here to put the little parts so I don't get lost in that sauna cleaner, which I'm fishing out. So far, it's looking pretty good. You know, some scuffages up here. Hopefully I can make it less noticeable by detailing. Um, I think this frame is pretty good. When I inspected it, it was a pretty good shape. Nothing that stuck out that was uh, questionable as in compromised. So this guy does not have a set of acting. Also, keep in mind, zip ties have been used for decades to put on computers. This wire's getting all over the place. Keep in mind though, this one has a little sharp edge on it and they get clipped close enough and you can cut yourself. Even though it's old, you can still cut yourself on this little guy that's still sticking out. So what I like to do when I cut these is try to get them down as low as possible so there's really nothing there. And if you really want to get particular, you can take a file and kind of file that off. Because I've had a couple bikes where the cable routing, you go pick it up and there's cable routing underneath and it's zip tied and slice my hand right open. So, um, the technology these days have changed so much that uh, uh, you really don't need that many zip ties on that. And you notice where I cut that was underneath. Since if I do end up scratching the frame, it's on a noticeable area. And also there's a little gap where that cable is on there. And this guy is old and obsolete, so we're just gonna Send it down the river. Oh man, there's a lot of get sticking out. Man, I'm surprised. I bet somebody cut themselves several times on this bike. Ugh. Unfortunately, this was, looks like it was professionally done, but without the professional touches. <laughs> well, anywho, we all start from somewhere, right? And we're not perfect, so I'm not dogging it. There's just Wheel magnet. Oops, that went somewhere. All right, now I'm ready to take this guy off without slicing my forearm off with these zip ties. So this guy does not have self-extracting bolts on the 105 and the Holotech 2. In that case, you gotta use a uh, crank puller. And you gotta make sure you get that little washer out of there. So that washer gets stuck in there and use that crank puller, you are smashing that washer. <laughs> then you're looking for another washer. <sighs> Woo! And if you can't get that out by just pulling that out, I have these little tools here from Park, which is, you know, we used to use spokes and bend them, but it's nice to have the real deal. Just makes it easier to uh, take those guys out. Plus it makes your tool wall look pretty. Gotta like that. All right. The CCP 44. 
Um, it's different crank bowl than the other one. This other one's for square taper. This one's actually for the hollow tech, which is a little bit wider surface area. Sometimes these little boogers get wedged in there, then you gotta tap them out gently. Um, it's always good to have a little bit of thread of grease on there. This one's already been pre-greased from being used so much. Um, you wanna tighten this down so it's all the way flush to the bottom portion of the crank. And then you can start using the torque or the, it's actually leverages itself. Okay, using the trick, use a little toe strap to hold the crank arm in place. Something I learned recently in the last decade. So you're not fighting it so much. And the reason why this is so short is so you can take the crank arm with the pedal still on there. Um, Personally, I would be able to take the pedals off every time because that's super easy, as you just noticed, and they have a little more leverage. But hey, that's me. So if you're a parts builder out there, note to self, maybe have something that extends out. I don't know. <laughs> something not as, not as hard. Oh, I still need that. Yeah, it's still in there. Okay. Or you can put a little cheater on there, but it gums up the little rubber handle, which that makes the tool look ugly. I don't know. The woes of the bike mechanic and the professionalism of tools. We value our tools sometimes more than our kids. Just kidding. Kind of. Sometimes you gotta use a crescent wrench or something to get that off. So there you go. Ah, that's what I was talking about. That little piece pops out. Don't lose it. You lose that. Oh boy. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to find it. So now I got a real opportunity to actually check this bottom bracket and see how smooth it is. It's actually a cartridge bottom bracket. For that being said, it's um while very little goes wrong with these guys. They do wear, I mean, don't get me wrong, but they don't wear out very easily. And it actually still feels like manufacturer smoothness, which seems kind of, okay, but you know, it's a little chilly in the garage here because it's still, it's winter at this time. If you're watching this video and you're sitting on the beach, it's, it's 30 degrees out. So I'd like to join you on the beach with a, you know, umbrella cocktail would be great. All right, so gotta be careful with these. There's a cable guy underneath. I wanna clean too. He uses a uh, Phillips screwdriver. Sometimes you gotta remove these to see the serial number, not on the Trex, but on some brands you do, so. You just take that little screw, usually with a screw or an Allen, then you can just slide it over to kind of read the serial number. Um, just a little trick there. Put that back in the little basket. All right. So since I don't want to pull the cables through all the way, let's see if yeah, that housing that the sleeve is not all the way in there. The sleeve I'm talking about, <laughs> that's short, um, is this guy. I have a couple of longer ones that I use as a guide. This one they just put underneath to be a little bit smoother. So it's almost useless. Um, just originally they were longer and they had a little cone at the top that fits into that piece right there. So I don't want to lose those, so I'm gonna, so what you could do is not pull it out all the way, obviously, but cut those and tape them. So what I can do is,
And that holds the cables. So we're not going anywhere. I'm going to take that other piece of this and take it down. In that case, <clears throat> watch your magic happen. Got the cables here. I still have a cable intact. I can push that sleeve through and uh, be able to take the shifters off. Cable, oh, those, the longer ones of these on those cables before I do the refurbishing. It does get kind of in a little bit of a way, but it still ensures that I'm able to uh, get that cable secured in there. So, take these guys off, save those for measurements. This comes in handy. And I try not to pop this little guy out. Sometimes I like to pop out where the end of the brake lever goes. Shift it all the way down. There's that. And this is a five millimeter. I'll screw it all the way. cleaner too. All right, cables are still intact. The frame is now completely exposed. I can do my detailing it. The wheels are off so I can clean those, true them and inspect, make sure they're good. Might need to replace some tires on that. We'll cut off the tape, get rid of the computer. Uh, double check the headset. It is a uh, bearing inserted in the headset there. Take off this old frame sticker, her bike shop sticker, which is, where were you? Cycle something. Can't read where, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Sorry, I would've kept you and put you on my little savior or savior wall. I do need to replace, take that sticker off, clean that up. That'll be part of it. And some of this needs to be cleaned up too. So parts ready to be clean. I'll fire up the sauna cleaner, get that going, clean those parts down. And in the meantime, clean the frame and the wheels, get those ready to go. When the parts are done, lube once they're dried, lube them up, put them back on, throw some cables, wheels, tape and pedals and it'll be ready to ride so <laughs> four more installments later <laughs> until next time thank you for spending time with me in the garage i hope you have a wonderful day until next time